Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu Jitsu Show. I'm Rob the Lord Humongous. And I'm Sean the Duke Humongous. And today, it's just me and Sean once again, mainly because of uh, ex- extracurricular activities that have been keeping us from uh, Saturdays for our recordings for the most part. Yeah, my, my time is dedicated to Fallout 4, man. <laughs> Fallout 4, great game or greatest game, Sean? Uh, probably greatest game ever. I'm going to e- go with that. Ever or for right now? Man, uh, I've played all the Fallout games, and they've been my favorite series. It's just like, it's sad as you get like toward the end of the storyline and stuff like that. I'm like, man, it's almost over for another decade or how long ever it takes <laughs> them to relate, release those games. I'm like, man, I probably shouldn't do this mission because it's going to get me closer to the end of the game. So That's true. What I do like about it is that it seems like there's a lot more... Uh, There's a lot more content in this one than the previous Fallout games. Yeah, I think they have a lot more space to develop on the the new platforms and consoles and stuff like that. So yeah, not to give a spoiler for anybody, but one of the missions where you had to go to a mountain, which I'm not going to spoil as well, put you outside of the border of the map, which kind of threw me for a loop. If you uh, pulled up the map, I was like, "What the hell?" So. They're clearly working on, uh, I guess, more hardware, more capabilities, so you have more of an experience. But at the same time, Fallout 4 is not helping my guard passing whatsoever. And uh, especially after this weekend, that definitely has shown. Yeah, man. You and you're. I, I mean, I consider you a really good guard passer. I mean, you can get you can through mine pretty easy. Well, okay. So this past weekend, in fact, more recently, like yesterday. I did a uh, tournament. So I did uh, the Matrix Open 2015. Grand total of 65 competitors. It was a pretty big tournament, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not by U.S. standards, but maybe by... And uh, you can have that many people in an adult blue belt division at uh, an IBJJF. Yeah, no kidding. I was like, holy shit. And they're like, uh, yeah. The tournament started at 10 and finished at 3. Yeah, that's pretty quick. That, that blows my mind. Blows my mind completely. And it was only two mats. So uh, I was in the blue, purple, brown, black division. And I got my ass beat pretty bad. So I learned a lot of lessons. I pulled a pretty tough uh, brown belt my first match and got submitted. And uh, he pretty much got me with a rolling crucifix. I felt pretty good because I got out of the initial submission of it. But then he uh, did like a step over uh, collar choke and got me with that. And I kind of debated whether or not to let him put me to sleep or fight out of it or just tap. So I tapped. So these German guys or European guys or? Those guys were from France, actually. Okay. The, uh, the uh, brown belt I faced. There were two brown belts in my division, me and then a blue belt. And then in a strange turn of events, I lost to a blue belt in overtime. Oh, man. Yeah, but. So yeah. what happened there? Um. And this is like all 220 and above or it was uh yeah it was 220 and above so it was a, it was a ultra heavyweight but I don't know man maybe I'm not drilling and training as much as I really should because about 3 minutes into that match I was winded completely and I'd swept him already I el- hit him with an elevator sweep I was on top of him and I was still gassing even on top which Almost never happens. I mean, you know that, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, still. I mean, your your win for your size is I've always thought was was really good. Yeah, and then uh, lost in overtime, man. But hey, I got a I got stuff to work on. That's all I need to know, and uh, we'll get ready for the next tournament. But uh, my guys, yeah, do, man, do what? Yeah, man. That that's one of the things. Like be, like, and I still haven't been able to train. I went a couple weeks ago and just realized I was a, a ways away from still being able to be on the mats. And that mat time, dude, just like missing out on it, like mentally for me is like the hardest thing. I'm like, oh, well, even this dude at the gym is going to be able to catch up to some of my skills or or whatever. Not being able to be on that mat three or four days a week is, you know, you're you're not getting better if you're not on the mat. And all these guys that are, you know, purple, brown, brown belts you know even blue belts man blue belts are tough those guys that can train or are training well i'm not it just it's it's a real mental mentally hard game to play for me not being able to train 
I mean, yeah, it's there's you'd still think you'd retain some skills though, you know? Like the majority of the time I've been spending has been training these guys. So you'd think I could still submit a blue belt, but I don't know, man. Feeling kind of kind of down the dumps almost about it, but you know, for you it's injury wise and that's okay. Like, but for me there's no excuse. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's one perspective to have, but, you know, you can use whatever analogy you want. You know, the wolf climbing the hill is way hungrier than the one on top of the hill, you know, if it's, you know, blue versus purple belt, but you just got to gotta stay driven. And, you know, a guy that, you know, and, and when I train, I, I like to train with a higher belt. So for me, there's nothing to lose when... I get submitted by somebody that, at least mentally, that's a purple belt or a brown belt or a black belt, you know. And if I get them, it's a big win for me, you know. Like, yeah. or, you know, like mentally. I'm, I'm not saying like I'm gonna go brag about when when I tap somebody that's a training partner that's higher than me, but th- that's totally the case. Like when you're a white or a blue belt, there's nothing to lose when you're rolling with the higher level guys, and you happen to get them. So that's true. It's very true. I do like that analogy, though. Though I've never heard that the wolf that's climbing the mountain is hungrier than the one that's at the top of it. That's really good. So, how's the uh, how's your uh, hip holding up? Is it doing well? Man, like my my hip, I'm about six to seven weeks from oh, out from that injury already, and it's it's healing up well. But I still I still have some knee problems, so. I could get into how messed up the American healthcare system is, but <laughs> I've spent a I've spent a fortune, you know, and uh, I don't need surgery on the hip, but my knee has been bothering me for over three months now, and I need to find a new doctor because all oh, this guy this guy can't even keep my uh, charts straight between my injuries. So, really, that's a whole other story. <laughs> should probably uh, should probably throw a choke on him, and teach him a lesson. That's just my opinion, though. They might arrest you for something like that, though. <laughs> That's assault, I think, actually. <laughs> Frowned upon in the American justice system. But, um... So, I put up an interesting, uh... An interesting article, I think. Not really an article, but, um... I brought up an interesting question on Reddit. And that actually might be something you should look into as well. Because there's a lot of good, uh... Jiu-Jitsu conversations going on on Reddit. But it's basically talking about journalism in Brazilian jiu-jitsu right now. Have you been like uh I'm not even going to mention any names of sites, but it seems to be that Brazilian jiu-jitsu articles are beginning to turn into like clickbait type uh yeah, type content, you know what I mean? Mhm. Yeah. And I, I've totally seen that. And I mean like are there legitimate news sources for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Absolutely. And I'm not gonna clown those guys. But what I'm really beginning to see and it kinda kinda concerns me is that it's a group of not just a group, but I mean there's some really bad um or some real let's see, I'm trying to think of the best word for this. Kinda like they're infamous. They're infamous for putting out these articles, or not even really articles, just opinion pieces that really have no content to them. Mm-hmm. Like, um, there was one article not too long ago, and it was of, this person was talking about cultism in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah, and it was kind of, kind of blew my mind as far as, like, is that really a news article? And that's an opinion coming from somebody. And that's again passed around as, you know, shit, I don't know, like gospel almost, like an article, Mm -hmm. like it's passed off as a news article and it's kind of concerning because video games have already been getting pushed in this direction as far as like uh, journalism and articles go, but now I'm seeing it bleed into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, like a lot of people out there that just they're, Facebook and some of these sites, and you can say like I don't, I don't really care. Jiu-Jitsu Times, they'll just even put something out there for somebody to click and, and read on it, whether it be you know the ten people that you see at every Jiu-Jitsu school, or you know your cult article, or uh, 
the promotion system, some of the same stuff that we talk about, but, you know, <clears throat> it'll be two paragraphs that don't say anything. Exactly. That's just that's just out there to be out there. So I, I completely see what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, like for something that isn't really an article and uh, Jonathan Hale, who's, as you guys know, one of our, one of our permanent guys. Now he writes for jujitsu times. And what he's been doing is this thing called the Un- unsung hero in Brazilian jujitsu. I think that's something really positive. I think that's something really good because it's not like a, well, in my humble one year opinion, like he's going out and he's doing what we're doing. He's talking about people that have that are not the superstars, but they're still doing something in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community to make everything either better for people or telling their stories that would never normally get told or anything of that sort. But I'm more focusing on, like you said, two paragraphs of bullshit and we get nothing out of it. But people will still click on it. And if you go to some of these pages... And you click on these articles, there's 20 fucking advertisements that show up mm-hmm. as soon as you click on the article, right? Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. And I really, really, really am disappointed in that as far as being, you know, in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community. I'm really disappointed that some people are going to take journalism, quote-unquote journalism, and take it that route. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree, man. So, And if you're sitting you know, at, at your job or after work or whatever and you click on those things, you, like I've stopped reading them. I'm like, yeah, there's, there's no reason for me to read this or seek out information. And there's a ton of people just starting that might be reading those articles and think that this is, this is the gospel, you know, because this is coming from, you know, this semi-reputable uh, news source of, of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's always, you know, we try to police our own, and we talk about making sure that people have the right belts and, you know, aren't trying to portray themselves in a negative or a false way. But when we have articles like this, it still kind of portrays us in this negative or false way. Like, we're not TMZ. We're, I'd like to think we have some sort of professionalism or pride in what we do. So you would hope that these people would um, they would make sure that there was some sort of like I guess ethics in the journalism they're doing. Like if they're going to spend this money on advertising, like if you're going to put out something, right? You're going to try to inform the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community. You want to give them some sort of substance, not a bullshit article. And that's one reason I stopped writing. Um, what was it, Grappler's Planet? I actually wrote for Grappler's Planet for. A grand total of one month. Actually, I'm going to take that back. Two months. And um, there was a contest. And I'm I'm calling them out right now. And pretty much it was, if you were the top contributing author each month, then you would get a cash prize. Right? 15 bucks. Whatever, man. That, was, that came in reviews for gear. That came in interviews. That came in... Um, opinion articles that came in whatever and it wasn't a matter of content it was a matter of how much you could put out yeah and it, and it's that's basically like free journalism labor so you're gonna get a bunch of people writing bullshit you know when it's at when they're asking for quantity and I imagine other places work the same way yeah and it, it's kind of I guess, like I said, I can keep going back to it. It's very disheartening, especially for the community that we're in, where we try to have some sort of legitimacy when we do something. And if you're going to put out an article of, well, this is why my feelings are this way, because I think there's cultism in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, because I'm part of this team, and I don't like that we are grumpy with another team. Like I think that's kind of a weak argument, and that's just... That's just mainly the one example I'm using because it's the most recent. However, it's, I don't know, it's more than that. It is a lot more than that. Like, it seems to be there's a lot more repetitiveness almost in the, like, it's almost an echo chamber with what we're doing. Yeah, and I've read the same article, like, and I thought it was, like, copy and pasted a number of times. I'm like, man, I think I read this article, like, a year ago. Exactly. Or or whatever (laughs) it is. You know, dated for that day or whatever. Yeah, and it's more or less just like uh, 
it just seems to be like any little piece of anything people can get their, I guess, little harpy claws on or succubus claws on or whatever you want to call it. And they're just bringing it in. They're like, hey, you know, uh, how much ad revenue can we get with this article? Like, like BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed is notorious for this. They're doing the whole, what are the 20 most popular foods to use in order to get laid on a weekend? Or, you know, the five things you should do to make sure your yeah. wife doesn't shoot you in your sleep. Or, you know, if you're doing this one thing during pooping, you're going to die. Like, you know shit like that so people are like oh my god you know if i'm doing this during shitting i might die and of course they're gonna click on it but but now it's turned into what did Rhonda say about you know holly holm and you click on it it's the same shit you've seen and i've got baited by those like a bunch of times this week too it's terrible dude like all the ron ronda rousey (laughs) holly holm fallout (laughs) and you just get so angry of it it's so the most the most ridiculous one I saw this week that got me is they had a picture of like Holly Holmes crotch and they were like saying that uh, she was on steroids because she, you know, there was like some evidence in her crotch that she had like a, a larger female part area, you know, yeah, I, I was like, I was like, come on, dude, are you serious? And then they had some pseudo expert in like a, a YouTube interview trying to explain it. I was like, I can't believe I clicked on this bullshit. Yeah, it's um it's pretty ridiculous as far as that goes because it is it's the same thing. It's like you're gonna throw up this picture. Was that even a real picture of her of her garbage at that point? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I do not know. Yeah, that because I saw that on Facebook too. It was like Holly Holm, you know, evidence that she's using steroids or, you know, testosterone and then it has this picture of this woman's uh bikini region with her uh it seems to be rather Bigger than normal garbage, I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> Pushing through her bikini, her bikini bottoms, and I'm sitting there like, dude, are you serious? Like, because I know if this was kind of legit, that people all over MMA or mixedmartialarts.com almost at MMA.tv, but mixedmartialarts.com would have a field day with this. Like, oh my god, have you seen Holly Holmes junk? Look at it; it's huge. Like, it's bigger than mine, but it seems to be either shock value journalism or just straight up bullshit journalism to get clicks. And then when you it goes back to what I said, when you click on these fucking articles, there's at least 20 advertisements. And, and if you scroll down, it's the same shit you see on all these other clickbait sites. Like doctors hate him because he somehow found this magic formula for higher testosterone or dermatologists hate this woman because she found the fountain of youth. It just seems to be a very cut and paste formula for all of these types of uh journalism places or quote unquote journalism places Mm -hmm. in order to make revenue for a certain person and i don't know man maybe it's maybe we're crazy for seeing this but maybe i'm crazy for seeing this part but it also seems to be a very exclusive type of group do you know what i mean uh why don't you explain (laughs) Let me explain. This is not my Illuminati conspiracy or any bullshit like that. But it seems to be that for either BJJ or MMA journalism, that it kind of seems to be very closed off. Right? It seems to be there's almost like an exclusivity, I guess is the best word, if I can even pronounce it right. Because, you know, got choked out a couple times this weekend, so I can't really Mm. pronounce words too well. But maybe some sort of elitism or that if you're not in with these people, like friendly with these people, that your journalism is going to get shut down or your ability to want to try to reach out to people is going to get shut down. And pretty much you're going to tell you, go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It kind of seems that way. Like I said, you know, there's a lot of parallels with the video game industry as far as their journalism goes. That If you're in with people in the video game industry then you get the exclusives. And then if you give them like the positive reviews, you're going to continue to get those exclusives or you give them some bullshit article where people are clicking on ad revenue. You're going to get those exclusives. Yeah. And I actually like with the video game stuff, I, I mean, that's a much huger industry than BJJ, but like yeah. I have unfollowed or unsubscribed to almost everything that I used to read. Cause it was just, 
fluffer and bullshit in somebody's opinion. And as we know, there's no worse trolls than video gamers. Oh, like, absolutely. To, to give spoilers, to you know, give either inaccurate reviews, you name it. Like the video game community is the worst. And I mean, it, it it's gotten to the point where it, it and this is a different p- facet of it. Like you don't want to go in like a party chat in Call of Duty with people you don't know or something like that because it's just a bunch of gamer trolls using profane language and being rude, racist, you name it. I mean, that that's d- detracts from any pleasant experience. Exactly. That you'd have. And I mean, like, it's kind of the same thing. Like, if, all right, let's say you're a game developer and I'm a journalist. If I give you a, a positive review for one game, you're probably going to invite me back and see shit that, you know, not a lot of other people are going to see because I gave you a positive review. Kind of seems the same way in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, quote unquote, journalism, that if I'm going to give you, like, this tournament was awesome, blah, 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 or, you know, this guy is the greatest guy since sliced bread, that you're going to get that same interview and all it is is just like bullshit it just seems to be repeating itself and i seem to be repeating myself almost like we can do this in a circle all night talk about bullshit but maybe i'm just frustrated sean i don't know maybe i need a yeah (laughs) i just i just tune out man i tune out from so much journalism like whether it's cnn everything's so biased you know it's hard to find uh legitimate opinions you know maybe people think listen to our show and you know, think we're biased. I don't know. Oh, I'd say so. I'd also say some people would listen to our shows and be like, these guys are assholes. Like, well, yes, you're correct. But at least we stand for something. Me, yeah. coffee, and Fana, and jujitsu. Those are things we stand for. And, you know, could be a lot worse, right? We could stand for bullshit. Or, I don't know. I can't come up with anything else. So, um, yeah. I forgot to uh, Twitter Henner about his uh, Gracie breakdown of that fight. And Trevor mistakenly, yes, he did mistakenly. I think because you're the one who brought it up and I'm the one who said it would do Twitter. But you are you need to get the credit for suggesting there be a Gracie breakdown of the... Yeah, and one never came out either. Yeah, I wonder why. Is it because there was no Gracie Jiu-Jitsu? I thought they trained punches when they grappled. My bad. That's Mm. a big difference between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Is that they train punches while they grapple? Not that, you know, mixed martial arts does that ever. <laughs> I mean, just call me crazy. But I mean, I, I, I kind of always thought that if you're going to train for mixed martial arts, you're going to learn to grapple with punches. But <laughs> maybe I'm just a little out of it. That's just me. So how's your, uh, you, you still been lifting? And it looks like you've been doing a lot of shooting lately, too. Yeah, I can't do jiu-jitsu, so I have to find something to do. So I've been shooting a lot of guns. Nothing wrong with that. That's your God-given yeah. American right to That's put true. some bullets downrange. Have you been enjoying that? Oh, I, I like shooting. So, hmm. But it's just expensive. It's far more expensive than jiu-jitsu. Oh, I imagine so. Yeah, as long as you're paying your membership fees, it's free to go roll. Yeah, that's true. You want to go to the gun range, you can 50, 60 bucks just to entertain yourself for an hour. Yeah, especially if you're by yourself, so you don't like, hey, it's your turn. You go ahead and shoot whatever you brought with your ammunition. Yeah, because I remember before we left, I was like, oh, let me get one last go round since I couldn't bring my, you know, my firearms over here to Germany. Yeah, that was an expensive half day, even though there was like a bunch of people shooting. But yeah, I was digging that. Uh, was it? You got that HK four one six? Yeah, twenty two. I'm gonna put a. A nice side on there too, just because so, I'm going to shoot that a lot, just because it is so expensive to shoot. So let me shoot 22 through that thing, and at least you know get some some target practice in. It's a nice looking weapon you got there, man. I really, I am, I am very jealous of it. Well, we'll go shoot it when you come back down here. Absolutely. And by the way, that might be pretty soon, actually, just because uh, I got pulled aside and said, "Hey, uh, you're probably going to Arizona here pretty soon." So for a couple months, we treat it like a training camp. My wife won't be there, so. I won't have to divide my time between my wife and jiu-jitsu. I'll divide my time between jiu-jitsu and barely passing my uh, NCO school. <laughs> yeah, that's not too difficult, though. So. Probably not. So uh, just a lot of jiu-jitsu. I'll make sure I bring my 12 gis so we can just rotate them out. and then. Uh, well, you can just stay here, man. That way you can wash them every day. That's actually not a bad idea. 
I'll I'll see what the rules are uh, on that. Yeah, you don't want to stay in the barracks anyway. No, nah, I'm not a I'm not private Austin anymore. I'm a I'm a man now. I wipe my own ass. I can wash my own floors. <laughs> man, you and me living together for two months. What sort of wacky adventures are we gonna get ourselves into? Yeah, I, I, we just can't be stocked in the fridge with like Fanta and and McDonald's. No, <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> so I was at Ramstein yesterday, and they had Cinnabon in there. And I know it was a dick move for me to buy Cinnabon while you were cutting weight, but I thought back to it, and I felt guilty. I was like, "Fuck, I bought Cinnabon when Sean was cutting weight like, and ate it in the car." Yeah, I was fucking salivating. I couldn't even bring myself to buy Cinnabon, and it was right there in front of me, just ready to go. No line, no nothing. And I just looked at him. I was like, dude, I fucked Sean over real good with Cinnabon. Never again. <laughs> I, I, I was too guilty to eat Cinnabon <laughs> yesterday, so that gives you any idea. That was a life-changing event. Like, the thought of Cinnabon almost makes me sick now. That's funny, man. That's terrible. Just because I'm an asshole, I've ruined one of the greatest things in life. Thankfully, I didn't drink a Fano or have a cheeseburger or whatever. That'd be... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the worst thing. But, yeah, so Gonzo's back, huh? Gonzalez is back from his schooling. He's yeah, out there yeah. shooting with you? Yeah, he's he was out there. He's He's got the, the uh, a few nice weapons. So. Dang. Shit, I'm, oh, fuck. The guy left that, my... He's, he has that uh, piston-driven AR-15. So. Really? Ooh. Yeah, those are expensive. I might have to uh, beg you guys to take me out shooting when I go there. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to beg, man. Just ask really nicely yeah. and show up with a thousand rounds of two two three or five five there six. You. My bad. Sorry, I'm talking to them American numbers. Yeah, five five six. Get that NATO standard going. But um, have you heard anything about how the uh, shootbox guys are doing at um, at Worlds right now? No, I they haven't posted much. I, I think Andre had one fight and won it. Oh, that's so. good. That's real good. Cora got a picture with Keenan Cornelius. You yeah, I saw that? that. Yeah, I almost messaged her and said, "Tell that fucker to respond to my message to come on the podcast." And you can- yeah, I was I was standing like right next to him uh, at one tournament last year, and I didn't say anything to him. I figure he's got enough people. I'm like, hey, Keenan, what up? What up, man? So I was just yeah. like, hey, hey, bro, <laughs> you ever been on a podcast before? <laughs> I'm sure he was. Oh uh, yeah, like. Why don't you respond to my boy Rob's fucking message about being on the podcast? I'm not fighting him. I'm just going to hit him with my car. That'd be easier. Like, you did me wrong, Keenan. I'm here for your ass. But he'd probably somehow sweep my car. I don't know how, but he would just sweep it. Couldn't fight him. So. All right. So, once again, another grand episode of the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. Anything you got for the folks there, Sean? No, not today. Not today. I mean, you know, short, sweet, to the point. But, um, hey, don't forget to go to thebigjujitsu.com. We have t-shirts. Go buy our t-shirts. Do you like the show? You should probably buy a t-shirt. Don't worry. It'll get shipped to you, and it's black. And, man, I've been fucking up, Sean, because you still don't have your black t-shirts. But in all fairness, neither do I. So, <laughs> But um, our buddy Zane, who's taking care of our uh, t-shirts, will ship them out to us, hopefully. So... I've got nothing else. Please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, like and share. Give us a review on iTunes. That'd be really good, too. But other than that, thank you guys for listening once again. I'm Rob, the Lord Humongous. I'm Sean, the Duke Humongous. And we will catch you all next week.